Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us here in this beautiful, chilly October day. We are talking today about ghosts and spirits and voices from beyond. And so before we get into that, please, if you haven't already, like our Facebook page, subscribe to us on YouTube. If you're on YouTube and you see that little bell button, go ahead and hit that and you can choose how often you want to get our notifications. Do you want to get our notifications every time we upload a video so you'll get it a little bit before we notify other people? Or do you want to just get them on occasion? That's fine too, but hit that bell button, decide how often you want to get our notifications. And please give us a comment or in any questions that you have below the video too. We love your feedback. We love suggestions for videos as well. And as we are getting ready to get started into that, um, JJ Roth is going to be joining us today here at Earth and Sky as well. And I thought since we're getting close to Halloween, what a perfect time to talk about voices from beyond, messages from heaven, spirit whispers, whatever you want to call it. There are many different terms, many different words. Some people refer to people like me as mediums. That's not a word that I typically use because for myself, I often think of the word medium. To me, it means somebody who lets that spirit come into you and um, speak through you. Right. I don't want to be in the middle of anything. <laughs> so, just sort of medium. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Or, right, just medium. I want it not to be really good messages. Or, yeah, right, so have exactly. meaning to it, not right. just medium. 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 Right. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so that's just not really a term I resonate with, but I do talk about having um, spirit galleries. Sometimes I'll host spirit galleries where we'll have a group of people come and then uh, I'll just speak messages, whoever decides to come through. I can't control who comes through. Sometimes so what I reference like, like is... A Sort of thing. Some, that's another word sometimes people use is the word seance. And I think the word seance often has a certain connotation to some people too because they think of the really dark room and then that spooky figure Maybe is going to come up from the middle of the, the table yeah. and right. it's going to shake things and scare people. And the people. lights are going to flash and the candle gets yay tall. Like right. That kind of thing. right. And so I don't use the term seance. <laughs> Although when you say that, often what I do have is candles and often oh, the candles wow. will show signs that are different from other people. Do the torch not that big? Not very oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> On occasion, I'm going to the I'm going to every so, single one. <laughs> Sometimes we'll have people, depending on the setup, sometimes we're more casual in somebody's living room, and so if it's in a living room and we don't have tables in front of everybody, then we'll just walk around as we feel led, talking about whatever messages we feel. But other times, if we're in a setting where people can have a table in front of them, sometimes like at a, I'll have a dining table, and everybody will be gathered around the dining table. That's one of the ways I really like to do it, because it feels really intimate that way. And if it's that type of setting, then I do have a tea light candle in front of everybody, and then I can tell based on if somebody's candle gets really tall, maybe not that tall, <laughs> but if it's much taller than the others next to it, or if a candle blows out. And you can tell that it's actually a spirit because air current in the room would shift the candles next to it. But if one person yeah. is acting much different than the others around it, then we know that there's a spirit saying, hey, I'm over here, there's talk something, to me, talk There's to something me. specific in that small area. Right, yeah. and so it'll help me know to go to that person. That especially nice. helps when we do the really large room gatherings, too. Last year, uh, Deanna and I were doing gatherings where it was about 65 people a night. And so when it's large gatherings like that, sometimes it helps to have a candle where somebody can raise their hand, hey, my candle moved on the table, hey, my candle blew oh, out, nice. something so like they, that. So they can help. Exactly. Keep things moving forward with who's, who's getting it helps us so yeah. we don't you know get to, because often there's so much talk when we yeah. do those that there's a there's a lot of messages that right. want to come through yeah. because spirits want to reach out to everybody and often they don't feel like they have an interpreter to speak to their loved ones and often as lay people people don't recognize the signs of their loved ones around them they they don't tune into that frequency it's sort of like i like the way deanna explains it as being an antenna for a radio and so she and i can tune into the frequency. Sometimes it's a little more staticky. Sometimes it comes in really clear. Some people can more easily tune into the frequency of the spirit channel, so to say. Yeah. And um, <laughs> one of my favorites. It's kind of like a YouTube channel, but it's a little different. Right, right. 
right. Yeah. And so, um, spooky too. <laughs> spooky, spooky too. too. I like that. I might have to use that. Yeah, and join oh, us for right. spooky that's, too. Yeah, that's good. I like that's that. That's great. Yeah. Yes. You gotta use that. One of, my, awesome. one of my favorites that happened last year was on one of the tables, um, somebody had a candle and it moved about two inches on the table. And so the guy grabbed my attention. He's like, hey, um, I don't know if this means something, but my candle just moved about two inches. And I didn't touch it. So the, the nice thing was I appreciated that the spirit, so I, when a candle does something big, then I, if it's a large group, I'll get all everybody's attention. If it's a smaller group, usually people tune in and notice right away. Um, but I grabbed everybody's attention, and when everybody was looking, the candle moved back two inches. So oh, that was yeah. great confirmation. Let everybody know that, yeah, he's not playing. This right. is for real. Exactly. And so I told them, you know, feel free, feel under the table. We don't have anything under there. <laughs> Often we do these in people's homes, so they know, you know, we don't have anything under yeah. the tables. Or, you yeah, know. We didn't sneak in and put magnets under the the table and the right, right, yeah. And so, it, and it's not like the movies. You know, things don't always happen that are really overt. But the message is coming through that's very overt. clear. <laughs> right. <laughs> and there that's usually are some deal. things like that. Yeah. yeah, that happen. And so sometimes uh, people will feel a chill over them. You know, often we have people that feel like they don't know how to feel their relatives themselves. So many people have a hunger for wanting to know that their loved ones are okay on the yeah, other side, sure. knowing that they're safe, knowing that they're at peace on yeah. the other side. And There's a comfort to that. Right, yeah, and so sure. one of the ways people can know that on their own is if you just notice sometimes if you think of somebody and you feel a temperature difference on one side, maybe your right arm gets really cold and, um, and you your first thought is your loved one. That's usually your loved one touching in and letting you know that they're okay, that they're there. Sometimes it might feel like there's a breeze that moves past you and you look around and there's no fan, there's no air current. And so it's subtle things like that often for people. Sometimes it's lights flickering. A lot of times people will ask um, if there's a meaning to the fact that the bedroom lights always flash right before bed or sometimes throughout the house they flash. And often after somebody dies, appliances will break or cars will break or, you know, different things that are big that have electricity running through them will break in somebody's life. And that's because it's that person's um, loved one that's trying to reach in and let them know that they're okay. Well, we are all electromagnetic yeah. energy. Yeah. It's what you, that's your science side, you know. <laughs> and so we yeah. have an electromagnetic energy. It radiates off of us about three feet. And so spirit carries well, that think, same. Well, and so I think a lot of people don't, when you say that, it's not just like this magnetic thing. It's, I mean, everything that runs our body, our brains, our muscles, all of that, our heart muscle, everything runs on electrical impulse. Electrical impulse, as it's being created, creates an electrical field. When you have an entire liquid system full of electricity, that will create a large electrical magnetic mm -hmm. field. It so. helps us to animate ourselves. It's that electrical current mixed with the water that's in our mm -hmm. body, or blood that's yep. in our body, yep. that helps us so that we can be animate. We can move our hands and our legs because yep. we have that the electrical impulse moving through yes. us. And so when your spirit on the other side, you don't have the physical body still to manipulate, but you do still have that electrical magnetic field. And that's what they've measured with a lot of different equipment yes. to be able to see it. They've actually found that the body weighs, I think it's, is it 23 and a half grams it's like 23, less? I think it's 23 grams or 20, something. Yeah. Right around yeah. 23 grams less after we die. They were There were experiments done, I believe it was in the 1800s, where they had people on a table, and the table was um, had a scale under it. Yeah. So as the person died, they could tell immediately that shift in weight, which is just fascinating to let us know that there is a measurement to the soul. There is a measurement to the spirit or the soul, or whatever you want to call it, as that electrical magnetic energy shifts out. Can I say something? Yeah. About that? <laughs> I'm not sure you're going to like it. They did it on a couple. They tried to do it a lot, but they had a lot of issues getting people to sit still as they were dying to measure that. Sure. So they've only had a couple measurements that they, that 
fell within that, but okay. that's kind of the thought behind it. But yes, right, Sorry. right, and then the, and then the culture was not pleased with him doing that. Oh yeah, that too. well, I mean, so there was a lot that of was yeah during the time it was especially this was in that era early uh, earlier 1900s and yeah it was, right yeah. He, it was very iffy to do anything yeah. with the death that sort he of didn't thing. have all of the yes. scientific studies on exactly. bodies that that's why they need have. to have them if they had them in hospital beds they would be that's able to tell that yeah to exactly I would love to to see them do that so. Um, but it's just fascinating, anyway. and so we have that electrical magnetic yep. energy that flows yep. through us. So on the other side, it takes time for spirits to learn how to manipulate that mm. properly. So they want to come through and give you messages, and sometimes they'll try to flicker the lights. But that's one of the easiest things for them to do. That's why it's very common. Or sometimes alarm clocks or things like that will have shifts with them because that's an easy thing to shift from them. But sometimes it's not so easy and they're really wanting to give their loved one a strong message and so they accidentally break the stove or they break the microwave <laughs> or they break the car or engine. All the or all uh, Yes, and so it will be this domino of events and sometimes people will get concerned. They'll wonder if their loved one is mad at them or if they're being punished for the mm -hmm. way things happened in yeah. the end. And this it seems like it's a very common concern for people. Well, and there's also, there's another side to that in the, con I mean, and not just to, Contradict, but uh, but we've noticed that when uh, when you live in a space, that your energy kind of becomes part of it, mm -hmm. and when that energy, any of that energy, becomes removed, it can actually mess with the home in and of itself. Like with us, with our home, whenever we've left for mm -hmm. a week or two weeks, there's always something that goes down. There's always something that that dies, <laughs> or, or, or <laughs> like the alarm system is a very very good uh, uh, indicator of how long we've been gone because it's like about four or five days it will just start to go off and for no reason and uh, and we've had it replaced and we've had it fixed and we've had it changed and all of the above but so in that well but with that concept I mean so if somebody passes that lives in the house Another thing that can do that is that energy group. That energy shift. Because we yeah. all leave energy everywhere we are, too. A lot of times, the vast majority of times, when I get called on a haunting in a house or to clear the energy in a house, quite often people feel like it's a negative energy. Sometimes they've moved into a house and there are a lot of things that are peculiar going on. Most of the time, I would say probably 70% of the time, it's just remnants of energy. It's not even an actual ghost or spirit. It's remnants of energy that need to be cleared out. Because if somebody, if you have a high range of emotion, if you have a lot of anger that gets dispelled, well, you dispel that anger and then you might start to feel better. But there's going to be um, kind of like energy dust balls that, that, that are in your house that, that ball cause of anger that came out and it gets there. stored in the corner. Yeah of the room and then as somebody moves out new people move in well all of that energy gets stirred up it's still electromagnetic energy that's there but it's going to kind of act wonky things are going to happen through the house and it's more the energy that needs to get cleared out not so much that there's a ghost that's hanging out in the that's house trying to like or haunting mess or. with them or Right. right, and that sometimes that's the case, but quite often it's that energy. I call it kind of cosmic energy dust balls. So it's that you just <laughs> need like to that. do it. Which actually that's next good. week we're talking about spiritual house cleaning. So oh, I hadn't well, thought about how that's going to tie that's in perfectly. Perfect. Yeah, so we'll tell you how to clear that out yourself. Exactly. And uh, and so, but it's really an energy broom. And, you <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, with uh, with spirit, though we have. Um, Sometimes it is actually ghosts that are inhabiting a right, space too. Right, Sometimes absolutely. there are ghosts that will get very attached to a certain space. And it's not on us to always just move them yeah. out. They sometimes, they have the right if they want to inhabit a space here. We share this planet with many planes of things. So if they choose to inhabit a space, if they're not causing harm and they just make their they're presence known, yeah. then there's no need to make Kick to them evict out. them. Yeah. And that's also their space too. Yeah. So it's learning to have respect, learning to cohabit those spaces sometimes and having respect for the other entities that are there as long as they're not causing harm. And you can learn a lot from them too. I know in Phoenix we had a house that had a very protective ghost in it. And uh, it was very interesting. It was a duplex. My best friend lived on the other side. And I remember my first encounter with this ghost. So um, I went to pet sit for him. He had three cats and had gone out of town. And so I was in there 
living room by myself and suddenly looked up from the couch and I saw this woman marching towards me, hands on her hips, heavier set woman with an apron on. She walked up, what are you doing here? You don't belong here. This is not your house. Jim's not here. Why are you here? I was like, um, um hi. Hi. <laughs> you wanted me to be here. I'm taking care of the cats. And why are you acting like this with me? <laughs> I don't believe we've met. Right. And this is very this unusual. Yeah, right? Don't be rude. <laughs> right. You don't need to be rude. <laughs> right. We, we can do this thing together. Right. Right. And she was very protective of him, though, in his space. And he always felt comfortable there because the ghosts were so protective of him. And then we ended up later moving in next door. And, okay. um, and I became very fond of the ghosts there too, but that's there's they can be very protective sometimes and they can and extend that protection. And then there was another ghost in that same house in the basement that was not very fond of JJ. <laughs> and, <laughs> and now another thing about basements before we go into that, often in basements a lot of the wiring for a house is run mm -hmm. through the basement. Mm -hmm. So that can cause sensations of ghosts mm -hmm. sometimes that where it's not actually a ghost. And um, so a lot of times with uh, ghost detectors and things <laughs> like, like that, the, yeah, you want to be, be careful and pay attention to where electrical yes. lines are because the electrical lines... big right here. Yes, it's called an electrical line. It's right on the other side of the a, wall. Exactly. <laughs> and so you want to know where the electrical lines are because that can give a false reading yes. when it's actually just the electrical It's just electrical, lines. electrical yeah. Now on top of that, because electrical lines are run through the basements, ghosts can sometimes amplify their energy in mm. basements because they can draw from that electrical energy to add to their own to create an experience like Okay, so you don't have to talk about no, it. It's, it's, it's just a long story. I and mean, keep it short. Okay, I'll try to summarize. That's why I'm not very good at that part. Uh, so I'm working on a furnace, and uh, while I'm working on it, um, there was they had a bunch of people were having a good time in the other room, and blah blah blah. All the lights were on, everything was good. Uh, I'm working on fixing the furnace, and I was sitting on this weird little chair roller thing, and uh, and so I. I have to get to the bottom of the furnace, so I moved the thing, I moved the chair behind me, and uh, it was on a concrete floor with a bunch of uh, extension cords and stuff, and so I just set it over on the side, and I keep working, and, uh, and while I'm just, and so I'm trying to figure this wiring pattern out, I'm reading the, the diagram, and I just feel like somebody's right behind me, like right behind me, and then eventually I lean back, and something touches me, I almost come out of my skin, and it's the chair, only the chair had moved about yay far over the extension, the extension cords, cords. Thick, it shouldn't have moved anywhere. Thick orange extension yeah, cords. Yeah, yeah, it, and I just was like, that's really interesting. So I moved again. I keep working while well, after a little while, everybody had eventually gone upstairs and turned out basically all the lights except this one that's like right over me. And so just to the side of it was this like where it dips down and goes just kind of under earth and there was like no floor to it or anything and I'm, so I'm in this little dark corner, just me. And, uh, and so I'm sitting there and I'm doing my thing and it dawns on me how quiet and really dark it is down there and I was just like, and I don't get scared of that, that stuff very easily, but I just had this funny sensation and so, uh, and so I kind of, okay, you know what, I'm going to go upstairs and so I get up and you know that feeling like when somebody's come, like you know they're running up behind you and you think they're going to like run into you and you just get that, you know, the tingle and I just, and I have that. And so I'm trying to walk cal just calmly, and I had a I had a long uh, trench, coat. A trench coat, yeah, thank you, leather trench coat. And so I grab my duster and I'm just and I'm trying to walk and I keep looking behind me because I just know something's gonna, you know, just smack me and there's nothing there, but oh, it, there's something there. And so I just keep walking as so I put my duster on, and, and so I'm about two or three steps from the stairs and I just so I go to run. And I, I get to the bottom of the stairs, I'm like, just calm down, you know? And I take a few, or I take a few more steps up the stairs, and he has this, uh, you know the old toy boxes? You lift up and fill the toys. Well, it's on the other side of the staircase. It's an old heavy vintage. Yeah, yeah the wood one, and it's full of crap. And the thing just, <laughs> and I almost lost it. I almost like <laughs> cried, I freaked out. And then I'm like, oh, I'm wearing my long, it must have caught it. And then I realize I'm about four steps up and it's on the other side of this, the whole walkway. And I just went, 
yeah, that wasn't me. <laughs> so I run up the stairs as fast as I can, and I go inside the house. As I walk in, and her and uh, Jay are sitting there, and they're just like, uh, you're all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm yeah, fine. Said, you look like you suck. You look oh, like you've seen a ghost. So and I go, ha ha, that's really funny. You know? <laughs> What's your problem, man? <laughs> oh, freak me out, man. Yes. So, so anyway. Ghosts will sometimes feed off of the emotions that you feel, too. <laughs> so the ghost was probably having some fun with you, and, and, and the won. ghost really didn't, <laughs> just didn't quite mesh with your energy. No, Not that no. he would have done harm to him, but um, feed, he was able to feed off of that fear energy. Once he started to spook oh, yeah. you a bit, it added power to his ability to give me those spine, um, yeah. spine tingling chills. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and he'd moved that chair over the extension cord twice, if I remember right, which was... Oh, the, that is right, yep, yep, yeah. Yeah, and so that, uh, which is just... And very just silently. Play, just playing with me, man. Just and so they, they can do that. Ghosts won't normally harm an individual, but yeah. they really can add to your emotions. They can really play on your emotions. And sometimes when you respond in a fear mm -hmm. way, when they when they win yeah. like that, that will give them fuel. They have a lot of time on the other side. So sometimes <laughs> if they're mischievous, just like people, some ghosts have a mischievous energy. Some ghosts have a very loving energy. Some ghosts have a protective, protective energy. Yeah. They have the full range of emotions that people have. And so we, when you have something like that in your life, know that it's not going to really harm you right. and that you can harness the situation by finding out if there's something that maybe the ghost needs to help it move on. Maybe it's choosing to stay there. It might be really attached to the structure. It might have been a ghost before that structure was even built. Mm. It might be somebody that was yeah. in that area. We know some examples yeah. of that with Native Americans that were on the land of places mm. and then they continue to do work from the other side. And so there are a lot of reasons, there are a large number of reasons for the ghostly activity, as well as often it's that cosmic dust energy too, that energy from people, from you, from other people current around, people. <laughs> right, that are currently alive, that scatter that emotional energy, which creates electrical current, which is like dust balls in your house. And so there's a lot of reasons for it. Now when I do the spirit readings or the messages from heaven, um, sometimes people ask how I do that. How do I hear them? Do I see them? Do I hear them? What is it? And it varies a lot. So if I'm doing a group reading, often I'll feel something in my body. So I usually ask that spirit let me know um, something either about how they died, what they look like, um, and what their relationship is to the person that they want to give a message to. Because it's important to have confirmation about who I'm talking to first, and then what the message is second. And so often I'll feel um, like it's something in my stomach, and then I'll know, you know, it might have been, you know, stomach cancer. I can feel if it was a sudden death or a fast death. I'll feel if it's male or female. If it's somebody that's um, above the person, that usually tells me it's, you know, mother, grandmother, father, grandfather type of a thing. If it's to the side of a person, that's more friends, cousins, brothers, sister, you know, kind of that same age range. And then sometimes we'll see children too, and the children will be kind of below the person too, where it's just the way we see it that from the other sense, side. Yeah. And, uh, and then I'll ask, you know, once I confirm who the person is, and I can recognize usually who the message is for, then I'll ask what the message is. And so the message will come through. And often when they want to give a message, it's usually some type of message of healing. It's usually either giving closure that the way they died, it was okay, or that they're at peace on the other side. Um, letting people know that they know what's going on in their life now. Sometimes they'll tell me, you know, somebody just had a wedding so that the person knows that they were aware of the wedding, that they were at the wedding, things like that. So it's always to bring peace, to bring closure. And whether or not you can hear those messages yourself, just know that your loved ones are around you, that yes, they're on the other side. Yes, they have a lot of their own business that they do once they get to the other side. Because once we cross over, we all process our lessons in this life. We have the first thing we do is processing what this life was about. What did I accomplish in this life? Did I meet my goals? Did I do what I came here to do? Or will I need to repeat some of those in a future life? What did I learn? 
What did I learn? Exactly, that's a big one. What did I learn? How was I as a person? And then when you're on the other side, all of those blinders come up too. So you don't have the judgments. You don't have the criticisms. You don't have the all of those human filters of you know what's right and what's wrong and how things should be and you know no, all of the shoulds just and the, accepting things as are right it takes that the, emotion yeah, out the emotion of it that goes with it, yeah. right and it gets to that core and the core of everything that matters is love so yeah. it examines did you live your life in love did you live your life in a way that you made a difference did you exude love did you feel love you know it's who is left in your life that you did love and how does the way you lived your life measure up towards that lesson of love? So I have to change everything I do. Basically. <laughs> I have to change everything differently. Don't it. And you always tease me about everything coming back to love. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it's the core of who we are is love and so for a lot of us it's once we get to the other side that we really see that. I know for myself when I had my first near-death experiences, a lot of that was that overwhelming sensation of love, tapping into the other side and feeling that ultimate joy, that extreme exhilaration of, of the love and the joy and the peace, energy, and being able to tap into that and feel that. I, maybe that's part of what helps me to understand the other it's side as well yeah, because of having sense. been there. And, uh, almost on the night leave for a little while. Almost, yes. <laughs> and, uh, and often children, when you have children in your life, this time of year even more so because that veil is thinning as we come near Halloween, spirit is always with us throughout all of the year and we can always tap into those messages. But this time of year, that veil really does thin. It's been thinning for about what, three or four weeks now and it will continue to thin for yeah, about I'm three more weeks. Comes on as you say that. Right, it opens and mm -hmm. feels. Yeah. <laughs> Little moon there. Yeah, rises. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so this time of year, listen to kids if you have children in your life, because often they see. They, see, they yeah. don't have those filters. Yeah. They don't get filters against seeing it until people, adults in their life, so, start telling them yeah. that's your imagination. You don't know what you're talking about. I've run into a handful of people recently that their parents had actually told them if they didn't stop talking about the other side they would either abandon them or punish them or you know do different things to them wow. it's just terrible like extreme things extreme things because wow. they were afraid of what their kids were telling them and their what the kids were telling them are things that were actually happening and so I've dealt with a couple of mothers recently that have concerns with their what their children are saying but it seems like people that are older now I've had several people that said their parents had said extreme yeah. things to them. I think there were about four of them that I talked to recently that their parents did that. And so no acceptance. And so if you instead of being afraid, just listen to what they're saying and if it seems like it's really true, then take that as a wonderful sign that you're able to touch in with your loved ones that have passed and to see them at, and encourage them because they just came from the other side and anybody who just came from the other side is going to be closer to hearing from the other side. The same thing with seniors and anybody that has a terminal illness, if they're close to the other side, if they're nearing death, then that <coughs> veil thins for them and they can see through it much easier. Well, so, back to the kids, what's the harm of, even if it's not true, and letting them go okay, with okay. it? Yeah, uh, people, from what I've heard, what I've been seeing is the parents are really afraid of the messages that are being said and they see things that the kids say and they are happening or, you know, describing okay. describing so they, a loved so they one. So they know it's the, more than just imagination. Right. The child never met a loved one that had passed and they are able to describe what they look like and things that she would say and things like so that. So instead of so, saying, that's amazing, they go, oh my God, afraid. stop it. <laughs> right. And so, and it happens. It's just... <sighs> It's and not judging the people, not judging no, the parents that are no, like that. No, it's out of fear. Well, that's what, yeah, that's but when the you problem. learn, fear is always a problem. Right, and when you learn better, you can do better too. So when you learn that it's okay, and you learn to release the fear, then you can open up more to the other side. You can take it as, wow, I can actually hear from my father that's died. Yeah, you know, course, things yeah, like that. Things, yes, There's what, a lot of great things that can. But, but fear is a propagator for so step many past things. The fear. Yeah, so many things in this world, not just on a psychic level. No. I know we've talked about yes. that a lot. Fear is a catalyst for so many things that are. Fear annoys me so much. <laughs>
<laughs> it does. When people can release fear, there's so much that opens up for them. Because, I mean, even if you're afraid, I mean, fear is a natural, it's as much as happy or yeah, love or anything. But just like you don't, you're not happy about everything all the time, everything isn't amazing all the time. And yet people allow fear to become an underlying thing where they're afraid of everything all the time. That's in our culture a lot. Now our country is a, a huge, well our country was raised in a fear-based Well yeah, that's how we, the control of it. And, mm -hmm. But but that's the point, is that's, mm -hmm. this is 2017. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be going past that. We're not supposed to be dwelling in that. We're supposed to go, you know, we're supposed to move past that. And so the other side of fear is enlightenment. So when you start to feel afraid of something, whether it's fear of spirit or fear of something from the other side or spirit, fear of a certain person that's here now, whatever you're afraid of, instead of feeling the fear, instead of playing into the fear, Think about enlightenment. How can you be enlightened instead? How can you stop running and face whatever it is? And then ask yourself, so, okay, so let's say if that's the scenario, then what do I do instead? How do I move react. past the fear yeah. and not react out of fear, but react in a way that let's give the benefit of the doubt. Let's not be afraid. Let's move to enlightenment. How can I raise this to the next level and not react out of fear, but how can I bring this to a lighter level? How can I enlighten it? Like with ghosts as a concept. Mm -hmm. That's what so many people that we've talked to, then they come to you. I've seen that they come to her, I have a ghost. Oh my God, I have a ghost. Oh my God, I have a ghost. And it's just like, okay, if you have a ghost, they're not going to hurt you. First off, if you could have, you could have a thousand ghosts. They're not going to hurt you. First, and then if you, so you can pull back. I mean, that's short of physical trauma. You know what I mean? When you remove that, it's like, okay, if they're not going to hurt you, then what are you afraid of? Well, they're a ghost. And, you know, I mean, that's the, how do you move past the fear? How do you, yeah, how do you, how do you accept something as it is? And how do you move into it? Okay, so if you're not going to be afraid of it, then what is it from there? Right. And then and then on the other side of that too, there are so many people that want to reach out to their loved ones too. And they right. want those messages right. from heaven. And so that's um, just a beautiful way to kind of expand. If you are a little bit intimidated by ghosts, maybe you can instead focus on who it is you would like to hear from. And then and focusing on the positive spirit. aspect yeah, of that, right. focusing on the love aspect of that. Sometimes our ancestors, especially this time of year, will come to us from many generations back, too. Generations maybe you didn't even know in this life, and they can come in if you decide you want to work with them or you want to hear from them. Often when I do the spirit readings, there's pretty much every group reading I do, there's at least one or two that are the last person somebody expected to hear from. And then we have several that are the ones that people were hoping, hoping to hear from, yeah. too. Yeah. But it's always interesting, the healing that can come in, the the growth that can come in and the peace that really comes mm -hmm. from those two. So And afterwards of everybody you've ever when you talk to them, there you can just see it in their person. The change. There's yeah. something different. You know what I mean? They they That's one of my favorite parts of it. Of it. There's yeah. a they they're living at a different level right then. They really are at a different mental, emotional yeah. level. Often when people first come into the readings, they can seem a little bit, so there's two types. They're either really excited and they can't wait because this is so cool. Oh my God, it's going to be great. Or there's the other ones that are like, I'm doing this, but I'm a little nervous. I'm a little bit afraid. I'm not sure. You can see them because they're like, please don't talk to me, and they're but ready I'm just to like, here. They got like one, just one foot still at the door. Right, yeah. Sometimes they do their point, their toes. Yeah, they do the that. Too. Uh, you know. And then we have the third ones that are the skeptics, which I always love too, they because down. they're like, yeah, this isn't Please. real, but I'll watch. And I love that, because then, they, you know, they're the ones that we often get readings right. for too. So and then by the time they're done, they're like, yeah. But every yeah. single one of them, just about every single one of them, I won't say all, but it seems Almost like all. all of them, yeah, will leave changed. And they leave with peace. They leave with hope. They leave with that understanding, that sensation of love, knowing that we do go on, that there's so much beyond this yeah. life that actually continues afterwards. And they feel that they have that proof of it because there are things that nobody would be able to know yeah. or explain or yeah. say otherwise. So taking that 
hope home, basically. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's that hope, it's that joy, it's that peace that I see on their faces that inspires me to want to continue to do that. And it changes and people's lives. I just lives. love that. So if any of you are interested in that, too, um, we do do that, of course. I do that on my own yeah. or with uh, Deanna yeah. as well. We can do yeah. group galleries depending on how many people you have. And we can do, sometimes we'll do it just as a gallery reading with everybody. Sometimes we'll do a gallery reading and then individual private readings afterwards for anybody who wants private sessions. And so, how many people want to do it? Depending right, on. depending on the size of the crowd and what we set up with everybody. Nice. So, yeah, if anybody's interested in that, it's fun this time of year, but we do that year round too. I mean, just because the veil thins now doesn't mean we don't always oh, yeah, do it no, throughout the entire year. year. Yeah. Because the veil is thinner, it's sometimes easier for everybody out there to start to feel those, just those little shifts that so let people, you know. And this is the season people start People just, get excited they, they think about, about it. it. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Nice, it's a nice time of year. People are curious more. They we're cyclical people, man. Human, yeah. we're cyclical beings. We want, you know, there are times we want to think about this, and other times of the year we want to think about this, and other times of the year we want to think about this. Right. So it's fun. I love this time of year too. The weather's gotten cooler. Yep. Pumpkins, witches, cats. <laughs> it's a great time of year. Yeah. Fall. That's you. In a nutshell, That's crazy. <laughs> so it, it's a really fun time of year, and. Um, that's about all we have today about ghosts. Next week we're going to be talking about spiritual house cleaning. Did you have anything to add today first? Uh, besides my spirit broom thing? <laughs> Next week, JJ with his spirit broom. <laughs> we have to get you one of those, I guess. <laughs> I, will, I will levitate. Now I have to string things from the... Yeah. <laughs> I forget a lot. So, so next okay. week we are going to be talking about um, spirit house cleaning because this time of year you always want to do your spring cleaning and your fall cleaning. Well, that doesn't just apply to your floors and your windows. That actually applies to spirit cleaning too because you have those cosmic dust balls that I was just talking about and that all that energy that accumulates from high emotions and just all the day to day. So to clean those out so you don't get little explosive energy things going on in your house, doing just a spirit cleansing is a great idea. So we're going to go into the how-tos of all of that next time. I hope you will join us next week. I hope you enjoyed this week's. Please remember to like our Facebook page, subscribe to us on YouTube, leave your comments down below, and any other suggestions that you have for topics, we are always open to that. Thank you.